All right, so we just have to wait for that chat to catch up. Um, is it live now? Ready to go? No, but this is all no, going to yeah. be live, what you're saying right now, because it's 12 seconds behind. So Beautiful. Get it started now. Hello, everyone. Friday night, 8 p.m., curfew. What a better place to be. Um, what we're going to do here with Vivid Chats is we're going to have a live stream uh, once or twice a week, and we're basically going to have discussion um, about cars, people, life, business, um, and some you know topics like mental health and some controversial topics we'll get through as well. So um, I'd also like to welcome, we've got Mo here and Curtis. How is, how's your night, boys? It's good. Evening. It's good. It's getting warm. It's, it's getting warm. Yeah. It's a toasty warm. home that I've warm. just been a bit nervous, boys, up in. A bit nervous for the, for the last train. Just a little bit, you know, first time. <clears throat> Never done this before. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, as, as Josh was saying, this is something we want to bring. Um, this is something here to, I mean, it's hard enough staying at home after 8 p.m. curfew as it is. Like, we're all kind of like bumming out here. But it, it, to take away the negative connotation of anything that's going around right now, we kind of just wanted to provide a bit of entertainment. Um, and hence, you know, the, the birth of Vivid Chats. Um, so bear with us, though. This is the first time streaming. And um, uh, it hasn't caught up yet. Ah, nice one. All right. There we go. So there's our technical first. There's our first technical <clears throat> difficulty as our first time streaming. <laughs> um, so fantastic to all the 25 people that have been watching. We have been on camera for the last like two minutes, but I didn't change it. So uh, bear with us. There's going to be plenty of technical issues and things that we'll encounter along the way. But we've got our chat here, and if you've got any questions or comments or anything along the way, let us know if it's not working. We'll try and remedy it the best way we can. But we're all new to this, so. So there should be a, there should be a live comment section there, guys, on your live stream, um, where you should be able to chat with us and discuss with us, um, throw up some questions, queries, whatever it is. The screen should be changing very. Oh, there it is. We're here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it's like thirty us. seconds delayed. Um, <laughs> so, but we can. Um, I guess uh, the the meaning behind um, this stream this time is to. Um, actually bring out a, a bit about Vivid. Um, it was something that we are thinking uh, we want to talk about a couple of things in this season, this session, this, this new series, and I thought the best thing to get started would be talking with you guys um, about where Vivid started, you know, where the inspiration came from and, and where, uh, what the motivation was. So I'm, I'm, I'm so keen to hear the backstory and I'm, I'm not sure if everyone else knows, but like, I'd love to hear it, so. Yeah, that's um, a, you know, it's a question that, I guess a lot of people have asked us and, you know, people that know as Vivid as a sort of a bigger motorsport club now uh, might not know the background of Mo and myself and that's what, you know, these live chats are about and the Vivid Chats, that's what we've come, you know. We want to bring the community together and we want to converse. You know, we can't hang out at meets or in a, a, a racetrack event. Um, we can hang out here. Uh, you know, we can, we can do a virtual meet. We can do a virtual chat now. So... Um, yeah, well, me and Mo, we, we met a while ago. How long ago, Mo? 2009? 09, yeah. I, I went, Been I too, too long, too long. Would have got less for murder, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was an interesting, uh, interesting start to a uh, friendship, I think. So, what a lot of people wouldn't know. So, you guys like you go on, go high go school or, or was it, where, where did you guys meet? Whereabouts was it? Uh, we met in a in a mutual mate street. Let's just say, mate um, street. Bats and rocked up. P plater, young kid. I was like, "Who's this?" He goes, "Oh man, that, you know, he's he's Indian." I'm like, "He's he's not. He's he's white." <laughs> <laughs> so, literally, it's just from then on, it, we just sort of clicked. Um, and yeah, just been friends over the years, and then sort of got really good friends and then drew apart and then really good friends and then, you know, sort of like, you know, life gets in the, tw in the way. Typical good friendships. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. And then you sort of you, learn you, to you balance the good the friendship. Part. You didn't tell them about the main part. No, I didn't, didn't want... You, you, you tell, you tell hey, the main you part. Go, you go, love you telling. All right, all right. Tell us, tell so us we, about the main part. Well, we, we um, initially, the way we met was literally on a, on a street. So we had two friends. They were, they were friends. And we were friends with them, and they were best friends. But right. then what happened was they actually 
had a massive fight about, I can't even remember what it was about. Um, and Mo was friends with one of the other guys, and I was friends with this guy. Um, so every time I would come to my friend's house, and Mo would be at the other house, at least have to to each other. Um, I couldn't say hi to Mo, but I had to do a little sneaky, just like a little, just a little hi, as I was driving it's, past. It's, it's, it's literally a, a, a 12 or 11 year running joke that whenever we, even, even at our vivid meets, if anyone actually watches us or pays attention, they'll notice us do the whole little wave just as a trademark, which is probably the coolest thing that we've got going. <laughs> yeah. Cause so our friends didn't know that we were friends, obviously. Yep. Um, yeah. So we were keeping it on the down low. We didn't want to upset anyone and, you know, get anyone in trouble. <laughs> so we would just do a little. Right. I like it. Pa- pass, <laughs> passive friendship growth. Just just little waves every now and then and all of a sudden a, a car club, like, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> just no middle yeah. ground there. But again, again, uh, you know, obviously the um over that time frame the, the friendship grew right in the early teens, whatever it was, and you know, I think we've all been to Princess Highway and there were all different events around that, you know, people going out late and early and whatever it is. Um, and yeah, we used to obviously hang out at those sort of, um, events that were yep. set up legal, so illegal. What, what you know. got you like, actually I'll, I'll start with, um, I'll start with Mo at the moment. Like, what, what got you into the, the car scene, man? Like what, what pulled you in for you to even like have that resemblance going out to highway and, and, and actually, you know, providing meeting actually, Josh. So what, what got the, the, the love car of scene? cars actually came from dad. He's the holy trinity. He's a panel beater mechanic and spray painter. So ever since I could walk, I had a spray gun in my hand, which was unfortunate, actually. Um, But yeah, so the the passion, you know, he'd buy old cars, fix them, sell them. Lots of variety of cars coming in and everything. So um, it started from then. And then as I obviously got older and older, you know, I bought my first car at 15, which is a Daihatsu Feroza. and had a seized motor and, you know, pulled it out and fixed it and put it in it. And then I hated it. So then I bought a Corolla. And so it's sort of, the passion was always there, like get something normal and make it something completely different. I always and died in that Corolla that... a few times when you had a sneezing fit. Stop. Yeah, People don't need to know that. Happen. I'm a great guy. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, I think we need to hear the story. What's the, what's the story? Come on, Josh, oh, tell, no. it, tell it from the outside perspective here that we're not, like, no censorship. Come on, let's let's hear this story. So, uh, so uh, I had this Corolla. I don't know what year it was. It was a bloody 1989. 1989. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was yellow with brown interior. Eligible for club uh, permits. So we're, any club permit needs, we'll hook you up. with motorsports. Don't worry about it. Uh, but it wasn't on club road. It was on full full registration. But um, it was canary yellow, pretty much. A bit of fade on there as well. So... Almost looked like That's a 30 year old taxi. Um, oh. Had a big, big, big Mola tin exhaust on the back. Um, Four inch cannon. I was cruising the streets. He was loving it. Um, and that one occurrence, I think he had a, a sneezing, sneezing fit of some sort. Um, and yeah, went, took out a, a giveaway, a keep left sign. Um, and yeah, so that was a very, very scary moment. So the car survived. It was fine. The car was fine. So we survived as well. Wow. But, uh, Story. So, so now do you keep like Zotac in the glove box at all times now, Mo? Is that is that the case? No, look, I've 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 taken steps to fix my hay fever issue. Thank you okay. very much, because no one wants the sneezing fit and stacking their car again. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go go back. Sorry, go back. Sorry for interrupting. We go back to your. No, no, that's okay. Uh, you know, I'm I'm used to it. Eleven years of uh, having my story hijacked by Josh Batson. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> just, telling what, just telling the people what they want to hear, mate. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not hijacked, it's, it's desensitized. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was my whole thing, you know, buy a normal car, make it something completely different. Um, majority, I could probably say almost all of my cars went from something standard, plain Jane, to something when you see it, you know that it's a representation of me. Like, they're like, that's Mo. Oh, that's definitely Mo. Um, as seen with my latest reveal, which happened yesterday, um, the first Mazda 3 <laughs> bagged in Australia. So I thought I'd do something completely out of the blue, in complete silence, no one knew about it, and then just uh, just just dropped it. Just and dropped it. Have gone, what's up? <laughs> a bit of a sneak attack. <laughs> Basically. And, and that's something um, that... Everyone's thanks, like, oh... Uh, Jacob Mason, thanks for pointing out my sign. 
Whoop. That's actually, oh, yeah. in real life, it's actually reversed, and I printed it out just for you to see. Um, but because we're doing the live stream for about three different programs, it's probably been reversed about 10 times. So, yeah, is it still reversed? I think he may be talking about the keep left sign. <laughs> he might be talking oh. about keep left sign that I hit. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> No worries, keep left sign's gone. Rest in peace, keep left sign. <laughs> now it's a giveaway or a stop. Yeah, that's, that's more than reversed, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple help. times. Send help. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's basically my whole thing when it comes to cars in general. Um, as for a club, obviously, once Josh has told his sort of uh, path to where we got to, we'll elaborate on how we started. So if you want to take the zone josh tell us your history what i might do actually just before we get into that is um just want to double check with everyone who's actually watching how's the audio how's everything getting received at the moment because we did try and dial that in beforehand but i just want to make sure that you guys are receiving it nice and well so can we get some comments just letting us know that the audio is working that you know the stream's coming up all right i know it's going to be about literally a, a 30 second delay which we're There's yet to figure out how to... we can see everyone yeah that's yeah, good I've, I've turned my I've turned my brightness up. <laughs> Thank I you, Josh. That. I know that was me. I know that's where you were going. <laughs> that was that was mid little, uh, little uh, no, Don't worry about this. I'll just flick this up. And you can see you can see who who works in media. Clearly, me and Mo have just got the the nice setup going, and we've got uh, Curtis over here with a thirty thousand dollars setup, probably ready to rock and roll. Yeah, he's got he's got that light blur going on in the background with the nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about and... the it's all about the accents. Like I've got this back the kicker light which is there. reflecting on this way. It's... <laughs> it's actually really funny. Like this this place looks really damn dark when you start to turn off all the lights. So like at night the other night, my lights turned off and I was just sitting here like this. I was like, this doesn't look great. <laughs> <clears throat> Beautiful. I think everyone's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, everyone can hear us. That's good. Uh, thank you. Um, Shout out round. to Yam for all your uh, club reg needs. Yep, definitely. Definitely talk. De definitely give us a message. <laughs> um, my background um, was interesting. We actually came across this, and I had to think back to how I got into cars and why I got into cars and I guess why I enjoy being around them, working with them, working with the people as well. Yep. Um, it was, it was obviously through movies. Um, a lot of the, the movies around at the time when I was growing up, um, when we were all growing up, all the Fast and Furious and everything like that, um, definitely inspired me to get that creative side with the modifying part of the car scene. Um, you know, I'd be at high school in year 10, um, and year 11 and year 12 or whatever, sitting on car sales with my bar 35 GTRs and, um, you know, what, what color I'm going to buy when I eventually buy one. And um, I actually went over to one of my friend's um, workshops that I went to school with. And he said, mate, you know, I, I couldn't, I can't believe that we used to sit there and laugh at you and, you know, just muck around um, that you were sitting on car sales and you wanted to buy that car. And then you rock up in it and it's outside. Like, you know, it was just a little surreal moment for me just to think back. Um, and look, from then on in, it's I've always wanted to give the car that I have my little spin. So whether it be different wheels, whatever, different color, yep. different interior, I just wanted to show my sort of creativity using the car. Yeah. Um, and, and the same thing as well, that's how we sort of inspired, I guess that's how we started Vivid is, um, there are all these people out there, whether it be people that, you know, want to chat at car meets, whether it's people that want to go around fast around a racetrack, um, whether it be people that want to, um, you know, send us a photo of their car just to show the world what they've done. Um, we want to bring all these people together. Um, right. You know, back when we were, oh, again, you know, it would have been, what, 2012, 2010, even earlier, um, there were such meets as the JDMST meets um, under the Balti. Um, and it would bring all the people together. But again, you, if, to attend those sort of meets, there were certain criteria that you'd have to, tick off on checklists and this and that. So we didn't want any of that. We want the versatility. We want people to show their creative through their car and bring their car along. It doesn't matter if it's a um, Lamborghini, it doesn't matter if it's a Mazda, it doesn't matter if it's a Dyna, whatever it is, you know, just bring it along, um, you know, confront about it and then chat to each other. I think that like, that's, that's, I think that's definitely been well like received. And, and I think that's, 
like I, I I came along with with little knowledge and it was like as far as I was concerned like providing jumping into a car club was all about like having not needing the knowledge of everything like I could go to anyone for you know questions of knowledge or like you know, seek support or whatever it was and like car scenes weren't just like who you rock up to a location with and what cars you've got it's always like that you know the the companionship that you build through it and like the support that you get out of it so I, I feel like without car clubs out there um you know creating that atmosphere that people just don't have any development without anyone else's opinion and i think that really like as much as we all seek validation and people think people see it as like a wrong thing a lot of people need that and i think cars is one of those criteria i i'm from like photography and media and i still send off like laws and like edits to my mates before i even publish them and i think like that validation from the people that you respect who may have more information or may have more knowledge in the car scene. It's just, like, so powerful. Um, and oh, like, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I think, like, that's something that I've experienced from Vivid is, like, that's something that, like, I'll always, always, like, recommend the new person for. Like, the easiest person I can recommend Vivid to is literally someone who's just getting into it or wants to get into the car scene because I'm, like, this is, the, this is your foundations that you're after because these people help. Like, these people are the people that you, you want to talk with. Um, so... Because you're, you're a current car. member. You've got a current member, Club Reg. Got a vehicle. Pardon? You, you're a current member? Yes. So, I mean, I've got the Beetle, which is Club Reg with you through the H plates. But um, I, I, I've been, I think I, there's actually a bit of an origin tell story. Us, tell us how it started for you. Where, where did, how did you see us or hear us or hear about well, us? Or... <laughs> what this is, I had my direct connection through Mo. Now, I, I'm just noticing now. So we're actually um, one. Before we get into that, we're running this live stream um, through Zoom, and unfortunately, with a free version, you only get your 40 minutes. Um, we have been doing a bit of prep for this, so our 40 minutes is about to run up. I'll update the live stream to a what we would call an intermission page, but we'll be back in literally like two minutes, guys. We've just got to reset our um, Zoom chat. So as soon as we get back, I'm definitely kicking off the story of. How Mo and so I met to how tuned. I got into Vivid. So we'll be uh, just be two seconds, guys. All right, cool, guys. I. All right, guys, we're just starting up our Zoom call now. So Josh and Mo can connect and then we'll be back with you. Considering this plan only uh, actually happened, well, we kind of put this into action from Monday night. We, we acted pretty strong when the stage four came in and we kind of wanted something to have for you for the Friday. So we're uh, still definitely fine tuning all of these um, I don't know, little procedures to make this happen, but uh, your feedback's amazing, so let us know, and um, we'll make sure we, we uh, up the quality for the next one. Right. So we're back up and running. Uh, you're in the right spots. The sign is still flipped. We're all good. How's my eye makeup? <laughs> That's my eye makeup. That was quick. <laughs> so almost lost an eye, but we're good. We've got another forty minutes on Zoom now, so that may happen a couple of times, guys. But um, we'll uh, we'll literally just kind of keep swapping over. So we'll try and get quicker at that. But. Um, but again, guys, it's, it's a new thing we're going through. So, um, you know, give us the feedback. 
um, tell us what we can do better, worse, whatever it is. Um, it's, we had um, we had Giorgio suggest Google Hangouts. I'm not too sure if that'll work or we Ooh, can try it. Look into, look yeah, that'd be a good idea. That's a good Just trying to make note of that. Curtis, tell us, tell us the story. All right. So I um, I used to work in uh, Seaford uh, area, and Mo used to work at Mazda. No, Volkswagen. Volkswagen on Peninsula. Yep. And every. Every day we'd, we'd drive to work in the same way. So we both lived in Cranbourne area and didn't know each other. And I had a uh, Volkswagen R36 Passat CC and Mo, you had your Golf at the time. And I did, he, I did, the memories. You know, typical P plater, who guy, drives to work each morning. When the traffic was clear, you kind of just dart through and you, I, we had the... Um, the Western Port Freeway, which has got two hundred K zones in there, really, really long stretches that are straight drag strips um, between roundabouts, to which we took every day. And one day I was like late for work, and I'm, I'm driving, and then I see this like golf darting between traffic up ahead of me, and I was like, also crazy. running late. <laughs> and I was like, that seems like a cool guy. Like I, I, I don't know about you, but anyone in the car industry or in the car scene. If you're on the freeway and you're driving 110 and someone goes past you at 120, you automatically think to yourself, he's going to get caught first, so I might do 115 now. So, <laughs> I don't know what, it, that, that might just be me, but I saw this golf and I was like, he's doing a lot quicker than I am. I'm going to, I need to get to work. I am late. I was like, I'm going to follow. <laughs> so, here I am, darting behind Mo and... From what I saw, I think Mo was trying to get away from me. Like, that's kind of what it felt like. We got to the lights and he's just like, who's this guy chasing me? And so, like, it, it just went on and then I lost Mo and we went out different ways. And then the next day, I'm sitting at the lights and all of a sudden this golf bar rocks up next to me. I look over and I do the one check and then the other. And I was like, oh, it's you. Mo winds down his window and he's just like, oh, it's you. He's like... Oh, I saw this this car behind me. I said, like, "What the fuck? This guy's following me!" Like I was like, "Ah, like it's just a, I was late. I was late to work," and um, and it just kind of like happened. We kept bumping each other and and uh, on the way in, and then um, I think it wasn't really long after you guys got your your first set of cards, and it was probably the third time that Mo and I were driving to work together, and um, it, we got to this point where we we're both stuck in like traffic where the lights were. We're about five cars back and Mo stops next to me, tells him to put the window down. I'm like, oh, okay. So I put my window down. He's like, catch this and just throws this card from his window across the, the entire lane into my car and I somehow caught it. And then he just takes off because he's, his turning arrow goes green. I was like, oh, okay. I looked down and I was like, Vivid Motorsports. Like, what is this? And that is literally how like Mo and I actually met was like on the road. And then each day when we were late, we'd bump into each other and as Mo's car got quicker, I saw less of him in the morning. Um, we were just at the start. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but as soon as when, we when hit those roundabouts and we hit that 100k zone, I was just Take like, oh. it was good knowing you, Mo. It was good knowing you because, oh boy, that, that golf bar was an absolute rocket. But um, It was quick. It was, it was so was. quick. But yeah, like, so we met and I got this card and I was just like, what's this? And I like, look at the back, it's got a Facebook like group thing and like nothing else. I was like, what business is this? And here I am. Like, I'm also new to all this. I'm young. I'm like, well, it would have been 2017. So that's what, three years ago. Yeah. 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 I would have been just 20 or so. So I was like, well, what's this? And, and, uh, yeah, I, I checked it out on Facebook and then I saw that there was a meet at Glenny Kebabs, um, the next night. And I was like, I gotta go to this. I don't even know what this is, but I gotta go to this. And I went to Glenny Kebabs and I drove past it. As anyone knows, you drive past Glenny Kebabs, they do a U turn if you're coming from the southeast. And it was just this. That was just to show yeah. everyone your car, Curtis. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. That's just to do the, the, the flyby. That was, you you do the flyby. Yeah, no, there was nothing to show off with the R36CC. <laughs> like, it was just, it was a quiet car that was really good for taking roller shots because it had its own <laughs> lane assist. <laughs> but. Yeah, I drove past and I just saw this like absolute massive crowd of hotted up cars as I saw it at the time. And I didn't know like what car meets were, car industry and all this. Like I knew from my parents, because I grew up in an in a older scene, like the 50s, the rockabilly, the 
you know, rats and tats shows with hot rods and stuff. So I knew that, but I didn't know that like people were doing it with new stuff. I thought that stuff was just on like Fast and Furious until I went past Glenny Kebabs and I was just like, what is this? Like, this is something new. Like, this is cool. And that's where actually I met, met uh, Josh. So that was my, but we always kind of refer that back to the, the card throw because it was just this elegant card throw. And if anyone's, th- I, I pick up your card right now, not your, your master card that's like nice and rigid, but pick up a, paper card right now that you just got off like vista print or something and give it a toss it's not going anywhere but somehow mo got the perfect toss just to go was there a slow window. motion when the card was coming to you did you see slow motion oh, I, it was it was just this moment that it, like, it felt like it. Yeah. <laughs> it literally i needed like i needed well, like titanic music in the background just like yeah. as the card flew through the sky because it was just it was insane. before i before i flick it before i flicked it i'm like please don't hit him in the eye please don't hit him in the eye <laughs> and i've just gone like a and it's just spun around and it just landed perfectly in his car and I'm gone. Yeah. You know, the, the funniest part about that, right, is like ever since that's happened, I was like, that, that's how you run a business. So like I got my cards from my photography business back then and I got my cards and I'm like, you know, that's how you do it. So I saw this really nice, I don't even know what it was. I think it was a really nice Mustang one day and I was just like, that's cool. It's like pink and this and this and that. I was like, I want to shoot that. So I was like, reached into my console where I had a stash of cards. I pulled out one of my own cards that I got from Vista Print probably a couple of weeks back. And I went, I told him to wind down the window and I thought, you know, you've got to do this, Kurt. You got this? And I threw it and it went probably about 30 centimeters out of the car before it just dipped down into the lane and took off. And I was like, how did Mo do it? I looked like an idiot just tossing cards out of the window. None of them went into the Mustang. And I was like, you know what? It was just meant to be that day that Mo did it is meant to be yep yep that's that's it that's how it's done but, uh, yeah, that was that was that was the start of like where i met mo and like i think we broke land speed records getting to work those days like <laughs> those that was in mexico, to be that to went to mexico so. yeah that was exactly yeah, when yeah, i was in mexico. mexico uh long good roads out of mexico yeah it yeah. definitely definitely so, is but um and like, where do you, where do you guys like, so, I mean, where did Vivid start for you? Like, obviously you met and you got into the car and <clears> together, but like, where did, where did the idea of a meet or a club or a brand business, where did that come about? Um, so over the years, obviously Josh and I being good mates, we've been in and out of a lot of different clubs where we did interstate trips. We did a trip to Tasmania, um, as you would have seen in, um, the comments before one of the guys saying that golf does great in Tasmania. Thank you, Steve. Um, we, we, we saw the ins and outs of running a club, being in a club, how a club operates and everything else is going. Uh, and so, you know, we've always had that, that idea. Um, and then world time attack as a lot of car people will know who live, breathe and just have NOS running through their veins. Um, it's a world class event that's held at Eastern Creek Raceway or Sydney Motorsport Park now. Um, where everyone comes and, you know, hangs out for a couple of days, cars, drifts, drags, everything. Um, And so it was the 2016 trip that Josh and I went together and another, a a bigger group of friends. Um, And literally after day one of World Time Attack, we were just standing around a barbecue having, I was having a uh, Apple Summersby, sorry, mum. And I'm not too sure what Josh was drinking. and literally just going, more manly than that oh, you, oh, 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 yeah, yeah glass of sparkling water um so we were we just literally stood there while you know cooking some chicken wings and we go you know we just said to ourselves imagine we started a club or you know what if we started a club how would it be who would join what would go on how would it happen and, you know it had a bit of self-doubt in the fact that what if uh, and fell into the trap of what if it wasn't successful you know what if we did all of this work and nothing happened what if what if what if um and the best part about josh josh is he's got the let's just do it he's got the let's just do it attitude and that sort of pushed me past my self boundaries to not want to do it and go you know what i've got this lad who's gonna you know support me and you know we're gonna do it together and it's just gonna happen and so with josh's mind and my mind no, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we sort of just gone um this is what we are you know we went through vigorous designs names what's catchy what's not catchy 
um, a whole heap of different things and we've just gone, we need to do something that welcomes all. Like how do we compile everything in? And, you know, obviously Vivid being colorful, uh, we wanted everything and anything that shares the same passion with us uh, to join. So hence Vivid and then Motorsports is because we do all cars. So we love any type of cars, like Josh was saying before, whether you drive, uh, you know, a $500,000 Lamborghini or you drive a $500 Corolla, you right. are welcome, you know, uh, as, as long as you're by, by road rules and everything, oh, <laughs> CCs that have flooded motors um, or <laughs> anything like that. Hey, Actually, it's, giving, it's giving the people... <laughs> It's giving the people with these um, cars and motorbikes and um, these enthusiasts the opportunity to be together, to hang out, to converse. Um, and again, that's why I said it. It's not only like if you just come to our car meet or our track days, even little things like Instagram posts, like it's a conversation, you know what I mean? So someone sends us a photo and so can you post it up or here's a, you know, the sticker that I just put on. Um, the car of the view um, sticker, um, and it's a conversation. I've spoken with so many people after they put the order through. Um, for half an hour later, I'm speaking them through, they're talking to them on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever it is. So it's that conversation that you know drives um, people's happiness and togetherness. Do you know what I mean? So no one wants to be lonely, and no one wants to be, um, yeah, by himself. An opportunity to be on there. So I together. Think, I mean, that's where I admire it so much. Um coming in was like, I, I kind of knew that this wasn't so much like a money thing. It was more like just uniting people. And I mean, obviously there's a currency behind it, an econ economic, uh, an economical currency behind it um, that, you know, things need to be put in to come out. But like, for me, when I joined, I was just like, no, nah, this is definitely about like, hi, have you met this person? Great. Now that you met this person, meet this person. Now that you met that person, meet this person. And like, it just, you just find groups and like everyone was just so inviting. Um, I think that's something that like, it doesn't matter if you've seen other clubs or if you're new to the scene or if you're like been in the scene for ages, like it didn't matter. You're all on the one level. Like it wasn't just like, oh yeah, he's been around for ages and has a landing game and respect him and only certain people can talk to him. It was like, yeah, cool. That's Jono. Go, let's go have a chat with him. Like he'll tell you all about it, and maybe even you can jump in it. Like it was just yeah. Crazy. And that's and that's probably going back to one of the questions that Jenna asked us uh, earlier. You know what what makes Vivid Motorsports different to all the other car clubs and communities and everything else out there? Um, it's it's like we don't you don't look at rep levels or anything like that. We're not in need for speed or anything like that. Gran Turismo. It's we're all the same. You know, we're all human. We all have a same the same passion. You know, um, I. I for one, would feel terrible if someone came to a Vivid meet and felt left out because I myself know for a fact that I try and go around and speak to at least everyone who comes in. If I don't, I'm sorry because I'm still running around trying to catch up to everyone else. But I try and make it a, a conscious effort to say hello to everyone and thank everyone for coming because literally without the community, without the people coming, our events would be curfew at 8, eight o'clock. Do you know what I mean? Like, empty. <laughs> So <laughs> it's, you, it's, it's, it's a big thing, you know, for people to rock up, you know, our burger stop meet a couple of years ago, you know, our second birthday, we packed the whole joint. There was 200 people there. You know, they watched us cut that Nutella cake, um, little things like that. Like even if people come for like 10 minutes and, you know, say, Hey, say hello, park their car, take a photo and leave. That's you. you thank you. You've come, you've made it, yeah. you've made it the night. And that's the you've thing as well. We're, you know, uh, we, we don't do it to, um, you know, have a thousand people there or do it, you know, for the, I guess it's sort of social media sort of thing as well. Like we do it to bring people together. So even if there's five people there that are talking to each other and conversing, we're happy with that because that's what it's all about. Do you know what I mean? So, and, and again, that's what this whole um, program that we're running with Vivid Chats is about is so that we can converse with each other. Um, you know, in the following weeks, we're going to have special guests on, we're going to have different people on um, and it's all about a conversation. Do you know what I mean? So in, in the mental health space that we're talk, going to be talking about eventually is, you know, it, it's a, it's a scary place. Um, and you know, I don't, I, I don't know much about it. You're not might know much about it. Like it's, it's, uh, if you do studies into it, obviously, um, you're going to learn quite a lot. Um, but you know, we're here to talk to anyone and everyone, you know, whether it be just shoot me a message by Instagram or, you know, the vivid or uh, page or shoot me a uh, courtesy. A message or whatever it is, a mo. Always we hear any of us. 
And that, uh, and inboxes that's are always open unless it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm sleeping like a mummy, like Souls guys. Um, I'm out. You ain't he's, he's out. Mo. He's gone. I, I know you ain't working, <laughs> Mo. <laughs> a hurricane could go past and Mo's still out, man. Yeah. This lad yeah. loves his sleep. <laughs> So I, that's why we've got the, the thing down the bottom yeah. as well, guys. So you'll, you'll see below here um, is actually just uh, the, the lifeline. Um, and they've got, I've put up two numbers here. Uh, and this comes like stems from exactly um, what motivated this as well as what Joshua said is like, this isn't about fame or anything. It's about family. Like it's, it's not about like going out there and, and reaching as many people as possible. And we want to see like a hundred thousand people viewing this and, oh, great. We made it fame while we were in COVID. No, it's about knowing that everyone right now is kind of going through struggles. Like the media is completely negative. You can't go online right now. Like the news is meant to be news. Last night I put it on and I was like, hold on, this is yesterday's shit, but just worse. Like that's not news. That's just literally draining us of our happiness and going, cool, just make sure that you're negative. Just keep, and, and this is what this is. This is meant to be a little bit of a you know, entertainment, escape, let you guys know that, you know, everyone's here to have a chat. If you want to talk about certain things, let's do it. Um, if it's something that you feel like, you know, you're sitting there going, oh, I have these thoughts or whatever it may be. And like, am I the only one or whatever? Like send us a message and we'll make it happen on this so we can talk about it to everyone. And then it becomes something that is a normal thing to chat about. And it creates just such a, a, a sense of um, confidence to be able to have a chat about that comfort. Um, but it's, it's such a normal thing as well. Like prior to, you know, I'll give you a bit of background. Prior to some of the events that we run, um, you know, a lot of the setup that we do with our, say, our track events, um, everything has to be paid up front. So everything gets paid up front, gets sorted already. So it doesn't matter if we have one person rocking up or we have 25 or 30 people rocking up to the track day, everything's got to be sorted. So even um, our mental health building up to the track day, whether it be three months out or four months out, it's a scary place to be. Do you know what I mean? If, if we don't, you are. Um, yeah, yeah can if we don't confirm. build a track day or if we don't get it covered, um, it's a, it's going to put us in a bit of <laughs> a pickle. So um, I've put some, some tips together in terms of just general mental health and motivation. Um, I literally, while we were preparing for this, um, one of my really good friends um, who owns one, a, a leather company, um, shout out to B&B Products, um, he put up a status saying about motivation and getting up in the morning. You know, how do I find that motivation to get up in the morning, especially with all the negative connotations that we're going through right now? Um, I've put together some some sort of tips or helped, um, you know, set goals. So when you set a goal, you make a decision to act in that certain way So that, and make sure it's measurable and has an end point when you set that goal. Um, and choose goals that interest you. So whether it be, um, you know, you want to stay motivated and working towards something that generally you want to achieve rather than what other people want from you. Um, find things that interest you within goals um, that don't. So sometimes other people set goals and tasks and you think, oh, I need to do that as well. It's not about that. It's about what you want to achieve. Um, and make your goal public. Talk to your friends, talk to your family about your goal. They can help you try to achieve it, you know, achieve, get closer to doing it as well. Um, also, plot your progress. So from when you first started to where you're going to be. Um, when you're working towards something, it can be really motivating to see the evidence that you're making progress. Um, and it can be through like a visual representation that you put down. A um, couple of other things, break up your goals. So start with some easier tasks and then work towards bigger challenges. Um, breaking this up in your mind makes it much more achievable and builds your own self-confidence. Um, and also use rewards. So, um, you know, if you're getting close to that goal, if you're halfway there, reward yourself. That way you're going to find the motivation in yourself to keep going to reach the end. Um, so these are little things that I've sort of, um, it's helped me in my last 27 years. So, um, yeah. Hopefully it helps someone out there. Yeah, it, I, I mean, there's the, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, like, there's so many. Like, I have like the system, and it's so relevant. It's like the what they call the SMART goals, which is like S M A R T, which is specific, relevant, achievable, um, measurable. So I said that the wrong way. So specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So like having those ticked off. And if you don't know SMART goals, like probably won't go on for too long here. But give it a Google. Um, it literally sums up everything that. Uh, Josh has said in regards to you know making sure that you're on track with it, but I 
dead set agree. It's just knowing where you want to start the day and then just letting it flow rather than knowing where you want to end the day. Like, you never know where you're going to end the day. And it could take so many different pathways, but like the best thing to do is just start it the best way possible because uh, that puts you on the best track. So um, the other thing as well is coming towards the end of the day, like we wanted to speak about this part here with the with the Lifeline is um, there is actually the text number service and I'm actually going to change the screen right now so I can bring up a bit more about it. But um, there is actually a text number service from the time of 6 p.m. till midnight, um, Australian Eastern Time, where if you text this number, which is 0477 uh, 131114, um, and if you text this number between 6, AM, uh, 6 p.m. to midnight, you'll actually get someone to respond back. There's no need to call them. There's no need to let them know how you sound or you know try and get yourself and, and try and breathe properly while you're going through anything or even, even if you're on the bus and there's no chance to call, whatever it may be. If you text this number, someone will respond to you from the lifeline and they'll provide support. Um, so as you can see from here, like they really focus on three things here, which is listening without um, judgment, providing a safe space to speak and uh, to discuss your needs, worries and concerns, um, and work with you to support, like to explore options for your support. So they're not there to tell you exactly what to do, but they're there to work with you to actually look at how they can help you and where to go from there because there actually are people out there who <coughs> have a profession in helping and not everyone's a professional so sometimes speaking to the wrong people can actually take you down the wrong way but um yeah we just we just wanted to create this little part here that was you know a bit of awareness because right now isn't a great time for a lot of people um and you know we just really wanted to put it out there for you guys so yeah it's just a just a little thing that you know we thought it was, it's important you know I myself have had family and friends affected by um, you know, this and mental health and um, suicide prevention and everything like that as well. So um, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a big part of myself and that's why we just want to spread the word and have the conversation around it, you know. So we're here, we're ready to talk, whether it be about cars or games. Thanks everyone. Shout out to the Warzone you're, games. Don't worry, I'll be back tonight. You're getting, them games. You're getting Don't worry, absolutely boys. roasted I'll be in the there. comments. <laughs> I've, I've just been reading and I'm like, you know, you, you, your mates are actually roasting you. Yeah, yeah that's fine, um, mate. I'm top of the yeah. leaderboard for Call of Duty, uh, so that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, just so everyone's aware, like, so uh, I'm a very, very big believer in the, the, the call helpline, um, enough so that I've got a very large sticker on the back of my car because I believe in it so much and just so... You, you can actually see it as I'm driving along. I saw it the other day. Someone literally, they shouldn't have, but they pulled their phone out and took a photo of my rear window while I was at the lights turning right. Um, it's just, it's it's six numbers that, that you know, they're, they're really easy to remember. Uh, and, and it's the hardest to um, pick up the phone and dial. And, and, and trust me, I know it. Um, the texting, a little bit easier um, because, every, you know, obviously, it, a lot of people nowadays would much rather text than actually talk to someone. Uh, Which is fine. Which is fine. That's, the, that's I, what they I'm, want to do. I'm yeah. like that as well. Like I'll see the phone ring and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to wait to text. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just don't want to talk. You just don't want to talk. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and hence, obviously, the text messaging. But just so everyone is aware and knows, our inboxes are always open. It's always green. Um, we have auto replies set up just so we can get to it in the morning. Um, you know, if you want to talk to me or you want to talk to Josh, you know, just let us know in the chat, you know, be like, can I speak to Mo or yada, yada. I'm more than happy to exchange mobile numbers, you know, if you want to make it a bit more private, uh, if you want to talk a bit more or, um, or even if you want to set up a, like an actual phone call, you know, just while you're driving to work or you just want to have a chat, you know, we are here. We're literally three lads who want to make the world better, small yep. step at a time. And it's well, we're going to talk about modifications there, Mo, uh, the stickers on the back. What, what, what have you done recently? Tell us a little bit more about your recent addition to the old Mazda. Uh, uh, so as, as I revealed yesterday, uh, instead of, you know, um, being sad and, you know, sort of down throughout this whole lockdown period, I, uh, I bit the bullet and I've just transformed my vehicle completely to have full airbag suspension all around, um, which is height adjustable, legal height, uh, illegal height, whichever way on you want to start it. On a Mazda. On a Mazda, yep. Mazda 3, yep. Tell Couple us how it came about. Tell us how the Mazda came about and why. 
uh, why I bought the Mazda? Yeah, no, honestly, like, you just tell, because people probably want to know, because they, they probably want to know okay. your past cars, Actually, and they want to know Yeah, why that's a fantastic cars. point. So, we talked about yourself having the Golf before. I think, I think it's good to bring it to light, why you bought the Mazda. Give us a story. Oh, it's a touchy subject, but, you know, here we are. Um, so, I let go of my Golf in 2018, Purely because not I not to go into the depths of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, really we're not, we're not here all night. It's not a it's not a movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so uh, I got to a point where uh, I was spending more on the car than myself. Uh, to keep it running because I, it was so heavily modified, and I had to sort of make a grown up decision. So they say. Um, and lower my finances and debt and stuff like that. So I got rid of a $60,000 car and I bought a $30,000 Mazda 3, which had more options and reliability than my Golf. Um, and I've just thought to myself, I go, this literally has everything I sort of wanted, but a little bit nicer. And, yeah. you know, paying $200 for a service and $50, $45 for a full tank of fuel and it does 600 Ks. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it's 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 a uh, it's definitely a dollar dollar value thing. So I put myself in a better position when it comes to buying things I want now instead of burning it on a car. So yeah, I've uh, I've had the Mazda for almost two years. So it will be two years in October, and I've I've spent stupid money on it, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Like I walked out this morning just before I had to go into work to fulfill online orders, um, and I just just. The biggest grin, just the biggest grin, and that's, uh, and it's it, it's, the, it's it's these things that that you know, just you look at it and you go, yeah, I've done all right. This is this is cool. This that's... will this will definitely get me through these lockdowns. And once we can have meets again, uh, um, cannot wait to show everyone because it's it's sick. It really is. I when I saw the photo yesterday, I was just like, this is the vision you had all along, and this is the vision we didn't have. Like I get that now. I see it. Like I. I I'll admit yeah. myself, like, I think everyone did. Everyone was just like, the golf, where did the golf go? Where did the glow in the dark, pocket rocket, <laughs> freaking turbo whistling, stupid, where did that golf go? Like, and then now you've got this. And I, I reckon if you had have got the time when you sold the, go oh, the golf, if you put that photo and then yesterday's photo together, I don't think anyone would have questioned it. And I think I have yeah. like mad respect for you because you saw this all along. You saw yeah. the Mazda all along and, and where you wanted to be or <laughs> what you wanted to do with it. And I, you just said then, like you, you transformed your car. All, literally, as soon as you said that, I started like giggling. If you go back, like in my head, all I thought was like Autobots transform and slide out because that thing's <laughs> not rolling. Like that thing is a fucking hovercraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like... <laughs> That ain't rolling. I'll, That's uh, sliding out of there. Like, I, I I admire it so much, and I think a lot of people like actually lose track of, you know, that end goal because someone's like, oh, you know, here's my opinion. This is what you should do. But like, no, I take full credit to you. And that was something like, even with the golf, I looked up to that because like everyone else got golf at the time. But you're like, no, this is my golf. Like, I didn't give a fuck yeah. about anyone else's. This is my golf. Um, exactly, and, and that's your your connotation yeah. of you know you're showing your creativity. It doesn't have to be have those wheels or it doesn't have to have that body kit or it doesn't have to be that color to be nice. You know, in your mind, if that's what you enjoy, that's that's fine with that. You know, I love that. That's I what think, we're all about. I love that about like, I think that really brings me into the car scene because like, like the car scene has and can be toxic. But like the one thing that will like literally always pull me back is just like the people inside your family that support you. Like, and and one thing that like I love about the car scene and why I got into it is like I always see like my car as like an extension of your personality like you know mine is like loud and obnoxious and that's all I need to say like that, that sits there and like that describes who I am when I walk in a room like I'm loud I'm out there and that's what I do like straight to the point type thing and I think like everyone's car can like be that extension of their personality and that's what drew me into it and finding those people who are so like-minded everyone else is in the car industry for different reasons like some people just want to go down a quarter mile at the fastest pace that they can like that's fair enough i get that they don't want to talk to anyone else who has anything less than a 10 second car that's cool i'm still happy to have the conversation with you because like you know you're in that scene 
with you are able to have it back, that's fine. But everyone that I've met through here has just always been, you know, someone that will have that conversation back. There's always like in mind, no matter what you have. And like, as I said, I came in with like, not really a well represented car, but I was received like with such welcome that was like, we don't care what, like what sits on the four wheels that you've got around the corner. We like you for who you are here and what makes you a part of this. And like, I think the greatest like, moment was when you rocked up with the RS3 at the, uh, the, the meet top level car park top level car park. <laughs> and literally just yelling at the top of my lungs i was like no way yeah i was just so so happy for you it's like but that's the thing as well like, like i was just gonna say the the car scene it, it's almost like a little seed you know it, it's yeah. it brings people together but then that that friendship or that conversation that started there develops into lifelong best friends or whatever it is you know what i mean like some of the best friends that I have around me are literally, I met them on the side of the road or met them on a road or we started, he said to me, nice car, I'll take a photo of your car, whatever it was. Yep. Um, and, you know, it's, that's where it started from and now we're best friends. You know, it's amazing that something so small like that, um, and it can be, you know, golf, tennis, um, bowling, but it can also be cars, it can also be motoring enthusiasts and that's what, that's what it's about. So, yeah. I. I, no, we're not going golfing. I can't play golf to save my life. <laughs> let's just be honest. If we do a mini golf day, that'll be sick. You can't play many sports, no, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, golf clubs fit in the okay. back of the master, no? <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> I have a huge boot. Thank you very much. Yeah, they, the golf clubs wouldn't have fit in the back of a golf, but they do in the master. I like I like that. <laughs> We've got a, it's got a massive boot. <laughs> All right, we've just got our second warning for six minutes till this uh, Zoom call decides to kick us out and we'll have to start. We'll be back in two seconds, guys. Two seconds, so we'll be back. We're, um, no, we're throw it to another intermission and um, I'll transfer us over to another Zoom call. So it will be two seconds, guys. Bear with us, guys. We're just uh, just fixing up the Zoom now. Um, in the meantime, if you've got any questions, throw them up in those uh, comments because we're really keen to get around to all the questions. Um, and if you guys got any questions about like you know whether we started the car scene, where we are, where we're at, whatever it may be, whether it's car scene or life or what we're doing now, whatever it may be, um, I just chuck it up there. Um, we're keen to talk about anything. It doesn't have to be anything related to what we've talked about so far. So um, throw it up there, and we'll be back in just a second. Uh, All right, we're going back live now. We're here, guys. <coughs> Don't worry. We're going to get this sorted for next uh, for our next stream. We'll have uh... um, if if anyone if anyone has any suggestions for us to obviously make it better, please chuck them in the comments. We've got we've, Giorgio with the we've definitely the top got idea the, uh, for now. Google we've got the up. suggestion to um to completely remake uh, Josh's setup. So new new camera, yeah. new mic, apparently. So. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, could... we'll put the GoFundMe GoFundMe link will be down the bottom here shortly. Yep. So make sure you get that. <laughs> and then we'll have next episode will be uh, MTV. Welcome to Josh's webcam setup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> MTV, this my this my setup. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, we're recording from the uh, Nokia 333. <laughs> three, sorry. <that's> right <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks. Um, yeah, out here in the southeast, uh, we don't get the best reception. They're putting up a new tower, so hopefully that'll. Yeah, better right. Right. Who right. Knows? kind of taking a bit right. of a whack for like the shit, the shit servers out yes. that way. 
It is. But I'm um, talking about talking about our current situation, gentlemen. Do we have anything we're going to be doing over the next uh, six weeks in uh, lockdown? Yes. Yeah. What are um, you guys going to be doing? Come in. Come in. Let us know. Tell us. Tell us, guys. What are you guys doing? Mo, have you got anything planned for the next six weeks? Comment section is now live. If anyone, uh, you've got Jacob. He's going to play Warzone. I think Warzone's um, a pretty good contender. Not going to lie. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not a fan of Warzone. I'm not a fan. Mm. You've got to get onto it, man. You've got to get a win. No, I'll carry you to no. the win. Don't worry. No, no, that's okay. I'll from the comments I was reading before, everyone carries you, so I'm not too sure Ooh. how that's going. Nah. Mate, don't, don't believe the word on the street, mate. Don't believe the word on the street. Facebook said it, so it might be, must be legit. <laughs> it must be true. It must be true, those goddamn 5G towers. Abhishek, where, 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 I, need, I need to invest in a shisha if, uh, if you can inbox me where you got your setup. <laughs> <laughs> Webcam live stream shisha sesh. I like it. Going yeah, to build a gaming that. PC yeah. and internals for the Evo. Oh, so Steph's got some uh, big, big boy cams and our oh, big boy modifications going in her car. Uh, the thing makes about 250 apparently at all fours. And a gaming PC. Welcome to the PC Master Race. Yes. Steph, tell us, tell um, us about that. So, Steffi's thing is going to be the Evo ah. you, you wish to ah. stop. Stop it. <laughs> um, uh, Steve's is going to the dash cam. Uh, hey, mate. Oh, so sorry. We still got him? I don't know. Uh, Josh is having technical difficulties. Yeah. He might need to call Sanjay. Josh, can you turn the um, C3PO filter off? Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> you, you literally sound like so robotic right now. So um, I reckon uh, I've actually got a couple of ideas in how we can fix that through Zoom. So we'll do that one for next time. But for now, you guys, uh, we'll stick with Josh being a little bit laggy on the stream. Um, so... Uh, I actually just had one of my guys from Warzone comment squad goal. So <laughs> shout out to you, Reese, uh, my duo's partner. Just saying. Hey, cleaning up a mini engine. That's that sounds pretty good, Stacy. In the dishwasher or a lot of <laughs> it fit <Yep>. right. <laughs> So yeah, it's definitely the, the reception out here. So sorry, wow. boys and girls. No, you're you, good. You can. Is your is your Wi Fi going down or something? But I think yeah, you've dropped out a lot. Now. Who knows? Who knows? You sound like Autobots roll out. So I was, you know, so I just thought, like, oh, oh, where's Optimus Prime? <laughs> you're star screaming here. Yeah. So, okay, guys, um, my comments weren't loading before, but now they are on my side. So I just want to kind of like go back. I'm just scrolling through right now. And Josh, thank you. Shout out to you for calling me a handsome devil. Love you. Um, I think, uh, are you guys loving the fact that we're on Facebook for the platform? Is that um, is that something you guys want to see more on Facebook? Or, I mean, we could... We could probably look at doing something towards Twitch if we, you know, if there was enough there. But, um, you know, is it, is it easier for you guys on Facebook or Instagram's a no-go for us because of, uh, it just doesn't like it. Where do you want Vivid to be in five years? Giorgio with the golden question. Ooh, fantastic question. Keen to hear it, boys. Come on. Well, it's... I'm going growth. I'm going growth. So more track days, more events, um, a bigger side to our merchandising side as well. So um, Curtis, give us give us a little twirl of what you're wearing there. So soon to be launched. Soon to be launched. We've got the uh, tan and black embroidery hoodie. So uh, we're just working on all sides of our um, motorsport club. So. Um, the merchandising side, the club registration side, um, more track days, and yeah, yeah, more events. Just to get a bit more social as well, like you know, if if uh, people are like, oh man, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, we got Vivid on Sunday. Like that's the biggest one that we're trying to aim for. You know, people who just know us to go Vivid on Sunday, um, and so recognition basically. 
It's about it. It's about <laughs> connecting more and more people together. What what is um? <laughs> I'd actually like considering a lot of the guys uh, that are in the comment section at the moment. Um, what what do you would what would you like to see come from uh, Vivid coming out of this? I know we uh, everyone everyone is um is waiting for another. Uh, oh, are we a bit frozen? Yeah, right. we're still waiting for the masks, unfortunately, due to the influx of everyone needing to get masks. Um, the, ours have just been pushed back, unfortunately. We did do a bulk order, and we are just bulk basically order. waiting for them to arrive to our doorstep so we can distribute them. So, Everyone's sorry, waiting for the next it's out of our well. control. Unfortunately, I wish we could. Um, you get them as soon as we get them, don't worry. Yeah. We've got Reese Mac saying that we should try a Discord instead of Zoom. So I guess if you want to jot that down as well, yep. and give that a whirl. Uh, Jacob, dream cars. <laughs> Funny you asked that. We were literally brainstorming this the other night. Um, yeah, definitely. Go for it, go for it, Mark. Um, well, <laughs> I, I, am the, I literally, if I could have these two cars in my garage, I'd be set for the rest of my life. So... <laughs> Uh, my first one is an Audi R8 V10 Plus, big fan, 2018 model. Um, I, just, I just love it. Um, front to back, it is pure perfection. Um, the note, the looks, uh, everything all about it. Just love it. Love it. Um, and my other would probably have to be, ever since they did it, were, is a uh, Liberty Walk wide body R35 GDR, complete front to back airlift the works so i don't i am not afraid to cut into the guards of a 35 jdr just to make it that much more chunky um so they're the two uh they're the two cars that i'd love to see in my garage and i definitely would keep the mazda still as my daily just the fun fact there because i actually love that as well so that's my trio trio that that'd be it'd be a it'd be a very it'd have to be a very wide garage considering you've got the r35 wide body and the r8 i'd like right now i we've got a, a four car garage and literally like with the captiva and rs3 it's still a squeeze so i can imagine like imagine how wide your garage would have to be to have a like liberty walk r35 next to an r8 like how wide wide the right yeah, space for the half car garage And what about you, Josh? What's your uh, what's your dream car or cars? Um, so yeah, fortunately, worked towards it and ticked off one of them. So the RT5 will be keeping forever because it is one of my dream cars. Yeah. And um, probably a twin turbo horror car. Yeah. Um, definitely something I want to achieve in my lifetime. Um, and this this list goes on of the cars I want to eventually acquire. Um, I wouldn't mind a nice old 64 Impala. So, oh, nice. Hydraulics? That would be delicious. Yeah, probably. Shoot our own version of Still Dre. <laughs> um, but I need to put it on a club permit, club registration, so I'd have to find out someone that could do that. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got you covered. Moment. Shoot me an inbox. <laughs> uh, but yeah, something like, you know, a couple of cars like that would be, it would be nice. And where, where did you, like, we've kind of got the, the history behind the, um, the Slanza, Mazda right now. Where, what about your car history, Josh? Like, where, where did you start with your cars and how did you get to the 35? Like, where does that even come from? A lot of people, like, yeah. will see um, you with the 35 and they're just like, like, I've seen that guy with the Skoda at every single meet and all of a sudden the 35 just rocks up out of nowhere. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Peninsula Skoda for the company car. <laughs> um, um, uh, first car originally was a Subaru Impreza with the plates just to tease because it looked like a WRX, <laughs> but it was an Impreza. Um, thank you, Natasha Patat, for uh, shouting that out earlier. Um, so, yeah, just to tease for um, an RS. But um, yeah, was, uh, after that, I had it for about six months or so. And then interestingly enough, talking about Mitesh, um, I went over to his house and he took me in his S15 um, and was easily one of the cleanest S15s out there in Melbourne. Um, at the yes. time, was making about 300 kilowatts and was one of the fastest street cars you'd see out in Melbourne. Like the thing had 300 kilowatts and 
people wouldn't want to race him if you put, you know, someone came up beside him or whatever it was. And you think about that now. Now, if you have a thousand kilowatts, you're still slow or whatever. So yeah. back in the day, <laughs> 300 kilowatts, way. absolute weapon. Um, but yeah, so I went, I'd go hang out with him and we'd go out for a few drives, blah, blah, blah. Uh, um, and I had the non turbo for about six months. I thought, I need myself a turbo car. I need myself a turbo car. So as his mechanic, um, just imported a 180SX Type X. So I thought, oh, not too bad. Not too bad. And then um, I asked him, like, how much does he want for it, whatever. And he goes, yeah, cool. This is what I want. Um, it's got some issues that need to be fixed. I'm like, cool, let me go for a drive or take me for a drive. Um, and he's like, yeah. He literally took me up and down the street and I said to him, mate, don't go back to the workshop. Go to an ATM. I'm taking the money out to buy this car right now. Um, I was in love. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I bought the 180, the Type X, um, and I had that for quite a while, um, and then did a full package on it, um, made that 300 kilowatts, but keep in mind, when I got to, to 300 kilowatts, um, Nitesh was at about 500 kilowatts, so, um, <laughs> the, the car scene and the, the modification scene was moving far, far faster than I wanted it to be uh, move, but anyway, regardless, I had fun in the car, um, again, built it to be an all-rounder, so it was a bit of a, a street car. Um, it was fast and straight line. It was a track car as well, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then uh, after that, I wanted to try something different. So um, the stance scene started to arise. Um, and I saw a really nice Audi A4 at the time. Right. Stance scene. So have your wheels, nice fitment, stretch tires, having nice and low. It doesn't have to be fast or anything like that. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this out. The 180 was costing me a lot of money at the time. Uh, the 180? Performance parts, left, right, and center. Um, let's, 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 um, let's get rid of the 180. So I got rid of the 180 and got into the um, Audi. I tried that out for a little bit. Uh, three months in, I contacted the guy who had bought the 180 and said, can I please buy it back? Yeah. So I missed it so much. I, I think that says a lot for the Audi. <laughs> so, <laughs> or a lot for the 180. Yeah, I still kept the Audi. I still kept the Audi. I did mine. Okay. It was good. Uh, I've actually chopped quite a few XR8 use at the time. before were very fast. Um, so which, which Audi? Off. You had an uh, A4 or what did you have? Yeah, it was an A4. Audi A4. A4. Manual, turbo, all the goods. Faster than an XR8 Ute. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, <laughs> so I had both cars. Josh and ran then... by like two cars. That's why he's saying it. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben got rid of the Audi, sold the Audi. Um, and we started to do a lot of track days, so a lot of circuit days um, in the 180. So most of the circuit days I was heading out to was Winton. Um, and it was a bit of a drive, obviously, putting that straight on the car and then tracking in and then getting back and driving home. Yep. So I thought I'd buy myself a tow car. Um, so purchased a G6 E Turbo, um, and that was a, a very fun car. Um, great daily driver, um, a lot of power to put foot into it, lots of space, obviously lots of time capabilities. Um, and yeah, had that for a little bit. Lots of smoke. Um, yeah, it was good. It's good smoke machine. <laughs> um, and then after that, got rid of that, sold that. Sold the 180, and I thought, you know, I've always wanted a GDR. So I was like, let's start. Let's start at a, a 32 GDR. Start with a Heritage. Start with Godzilla, um, and see where it takes me. So picked yep. up the white R32 GDR from Queensland. Um, I literally saw it online. Um, got some videos and some um, photos of the car. Literally flew up on the <laughs> Thursday. Bought the car, put it on a truck, and then flew back the Thursday night. Jesus. Um, and then, yeah, enjoyed that for quite a bit of time. Um, and then, a lot of you probably know, but put some put some money into that, and it was a it was a good fun car. Um, and then again, to drive. Again, it's um, I don't know with these cars, I sort of enjoy them and stuff like that. But then I'm like, well, what can I get next? Yeah. Um, What's and the next then one? Right? I thought. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's I, I always see life as if, like experiences, um, you know, enjoy that car, 
keep it. But then I want I want to see what the next experience is. You know what the next car is. Um, and I thought my first dream car is now the five GDR. So just worked hard towards that, and um, yeah, got it. So um, you know, set your goals like that. What I was saying to about before mental health tips, like a lot of my stuff is literally like vision boards and having goals set up. Like how can I get to this end goal? But I need to do all these little steps in between. So it's um, yeah, it's just it's just getting there. Um, and yeah enjoy it but now yeah so i've also bought a little toy i don't know if a lot of people have seen on um, my instagram and facebook and stuff but it's the vy turbo ls <clears throat> so that's a bit of fun that's, so, that's a little project that's, that's it's a jet that's a that's a plain engine stuck in a car body somewhere. yeah so, and well, again, it's something in different. It's, uh, in, all, our, in our comments section, you've got people mentioning a S14. Agreed. Yes, yes. Yeah, Lee Nicholas. I, and I had the S14 for such a short amount of time, I forgot about it. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> Thank you. Lee, hey, Lee's hey, actually hey. going to be one of our special guests in the up, in the um, upcoming weeks. Lee's going to be one of our special guests. So um, he's got quite a few cars. He's been in the car the automotive industry and the enthusiast for a long period of time. So he's going to give us a good, good insight into his thoughts. Um, and yeah, the, the S14, I had it for such a short amount of time. I had it uh, for probably three months or so, bought it, enjoyed it, um, did some drift days. And if you head over to Lee Nichols' uh, Instagram and Facebook, you'll see that it went from a stock green looking Series 1 S14 to an absolute weapon of a drift car. And it's just go out and Check, just check it out on his socials, so you'll see it there. We'll see more there. All right. Well, have you got... Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my car history. Um, did you want to put a, uh, a link to his socials in the comments for us, Josh? Yes, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that shortly. Lethal Lee Drift. So and that's what we're going to do as well, guys, is we're going to, um, like I said, in the upcoming weeks... We're going to have different guests on. Um, so people from different parts of motoring enthusiasts, they're going to be joining us, again, having a chat like this. Um, so if you want to be one of these people, please send us a message. Um, send us an inbox. Um, have a chat to myself, Marwa Curtis. If you want to jump on and be live with us, yep. um, we'll fit you into the schedule. It's already filling up pretty quickly. So make sure you stay tuned. And uh, yeah, yeah. And always coming back to it we're always going to ask this but if there's anything uh, you liked a lot let us know like let us know what you um, liked about this um, certain parts if there were some parts you want us to kind of like focus on a little bit more um, or if we announce someone let us know what you want to know about them because going back to kind of the moral of where this all is and you know vivid and where vivid chats comes from is the fact that we can like you may not know the person, but we can introduce you to them or we can ask the questions that you've always wanted to know or, you know, you can get to know a certain amount of people better. Um, and, uh, and and by the way, like, go absolutely nuts in the comments. Like, add everyone, get to know everyone, throw down your socials if you want um, and, and your dream cars and get involved in the conversation. So, um, it's completely open. Don't feel like you guys have, you know, got to, ah, uh, we can only say certain things or we can only, you know, ask for certain people to be on or whatever it may be. Get involved, guys. It's, it's something we highly encourage. So, but, um, I think I think we've and finished. tell us what you want to hear or what you want to hear about. And if you want yeah. to talk about something or conversation, tell us. We'll call it conversation street. The conversation streets. Vivid chats. It's all about having a great chat. So, um, we've got uh, nine fifteen. So we're we're probably going to tie this off around nine. Soonish from 9.15, 9.30 area. It's something we don't want to go on for, for too, too long for you guys. It's 8 yeah. o'clock till, you know, the 9 to 9.30 area. Um, but, uh, yeah, so coming up, let us know. Getting in touch with all of us. All and again, yeah, the, the, the mental health links are down here. So, um, you know, Almost feel welcome. free to give them a call. Give them us a call. Um, whatever it is, everyone's here. Everyone's ready to help. It's all about conversation. Um, you know, you don't want to be locked up in our curfews and uh, during this period by yourself, you know, in the thoughts in your head. Have a conversation. We're ready. We're here. That's what it's all about. Different chats.
And uh, another one is let us know who you'd like to see on as well. Um, so don't, yeah, you don't have to just let us know that you want to be on. Let us know who you want to see on. Um, you know, yeah, and inbox or, us any suggestions, questions, okay. or um, how we can make this stream better or anything because this is our first one, yeah, as, as, as we said. And first honestly, time is... I'm, I'm blown out, blown out of the freaking water with the turnout. Like we've, we've had plenty of comments and engagement along. Um, you know, we know... We, I mean, I recognize almost everyone that's in the, the comment section right here, which is absolutely awesome. Love you guys and, and getting involved and supporting us for this. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, and, thank you, you so know, much. Make sure you share around. In. We're going to upload this video. Uh, we keep getting dropped out, so I'm not sure if that's... But uh, I think this is where we come to call it, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. Take care, guys. Bye.